completed section 2.2 reading and problems uh, no more videos from the video list it's going to take I want to make progress in here uh, then uh, read section 2.2 of course for which I did the problems there were 10 proofs in that section and a total of 17 problems also read section 2.3 but uh, going into the problems I don't want to break them all up I'd rather just, just do them in one chunk and this is almost like a full update that sort of makes up in my timing to the last two updates have been a little more than an update this is actually a little less uh, so total of 17 problems 10 of which are proofs I'm up to 200 problems attempted 123 proofs of course that surpasses whatever I did for Anton so sections 2.2 and 2.3 are matrix representation of a linear transformation and this is done in Anton uh, in a lot more detail in an applied way uh, so the terminology in this section was a little tricky to get a, to get into uh, but it's the same content as there is in Anton and um, yeah then composition of linear transformations and um, matrix multiplication was actually easier to get into because it's just matrix multiplication and so this part was actually easy reading compared to section 2.2 and that had an application for instance matrices and the concept of a click so this is uh, two people uh, so it says uh, three or more people with the property that any two can send to each other a message is called a click and the assumption here is a one is uh, row one can send a message to column one yeah and then also the concept of dominance a dominance relation where it's a one-way message where person one can send to person two but person two cannot send to uh, person one uh, I looked it up and so I'll show handouts. I mean, look, uh, these days, because I'm trying to go uh, through the subject in a, in a more time efficient fashion, and I'm, I'm not meaning to fatten up my notebooks with handouts, I rarely do handouts. So then, uh, yeah, this is where it all begins with the reading for section 2.2. .2. Of course, same as the book, as always. Nothing, I didn't do anything special in this case. Sometimes I'll add theorems, but this time I did not. Got all the true and false correct. That's pretty good. Got all these questions correct. Um, got this one wrong. Did not understand what I was doing. But once I looked at the answer, I was able to figure it out. Yeah, I was able to figure it out. So it all had to do with inverting the matrix. And this is what, what I was referring to before that even though it's the same concepts that I have already done in Anton with many problems it was the story was told in just a way where it got me a little confused and I didn't know what I was doing but once I mean at some point I was like when I looked at the answer I was like I know those thirds those thirds come from inverting what I've been given and sure enough when you invert it that's what you get uh, so you invert the two the two bases which is this um where was it the two bases is this uh, one one zero zero one one two two three you invert that matrix and that gets you to the beta uh the beta basis and then you multiply that beta base ba uh, basis by the alphas the, the little numbers these pairs so that was that then number five, uh, I got correctly. I actually, this is something that would have been a neat proof, but it was not asked. It is correct. I checked it, but they, they, the, they weren't asking me to do that. They were just asking me to do something that was a lot simpler. And I did it correctly. I got really close because I forgot to eliminate this redundant uh, column, but I got, it's the same thing that I did in Anton. So that was familiar. I screwed this one up. I just misunderstood what I was doing. And then on to a bunch of proofs. And I, I was very proud of problem 10 because it's the only one after, after the first few problems for which I had an answer. Uh, and sure enough, I got it right. I did get it right. 
Then uh, problem 12, problem 12 had an answer, did it? Yeah, had an answer, uh, and I was very close. I was very close in what I said. I just did not invoke a theorem that I thought I didn't need to invoke. Uh, but I did do the proof correctly. So there were additional proofs for 2.2. Uh, now, problem 16, I forgot to do this, to go back and add some of the topology that was done in section 2.1, I believe, or the last section of chapter 1. Uh, but I think I did it correctly, too, even though I gave myself a blank square, because not only do I not have an answer, I'm not sure that I did it correctly. But this is a chain, and I should have said so in here, that this is a chain, and that, I think, is the way to prove that even though the two subsets, S1, is, is embedded in S2, the, uh, their null sets are flipped because the null set of T, uh, in the null set of the entire big set has to be in all subsets. I believe so. And, you know, I'll, I'll find out someday if I'm right or wrong uh, when I meet real mathematicians uh, at a university, hopefully. Then uh, section 2.3, reading, that was just reading, and I, as I showed uh, in, um, in the book itself. Uh, so yeah, the indices, I'll have to get more nimble with the indices, uh, because in the case of Anton, it was more calculations, fewer abstract indices. But I'm slowly getting the hang of just doing that with indices. Doing all, all the transformations. Then of course, uh, this is the handout that is linked to in the book, the Leslie Matrix and Population Change. I have not read it. I'm going to read it when I get to the three or four problems at the very end of this section that involve incidence matrices. And I also got from Wolf Ma Wolfram Math World a nice incidence matrix uh, definition. And they're a little different because in the case of the book, in the book it is assumed that the diagonal element are always zero, and that is not the case in the definition from Wolfram Math World. So that was section 2.2, uh, reading and problems, and the, re the reading for section 2.3.